An explanation for what a black hole really is. And this isn't just a theory. This is what it is. And this isn't coming from Dan. This is coming from the eye. Picture a garden. Or let's just picture a plot of land. And in that plot of land, we're going to use, instead of a garden, because you see a, the garden as land being rototilled up and planted in, and life comes from that soil. And that soil you know, produces those plants and those vegetables and whatever comes from that soil. Well, let's say instead you dig a pond. And what is that pond? It's just a, a hole. But it's not a hole because once you dig the hole, it's filled with air and space. And, you know, if you were at the bottom of the hole and looking up, it would be filled with sky, right? You know, it, the hole is sp filled with space. But before you dug the hole, that space was filled with dirt, but you moved the dirt, so now it's a hole. And... After time, it fills up with what? Water, which is another clear version of space. Okay, so clear version of space, water. Over time, what else happens? Life starts growing in that pond without doing anything else. All you did is dug a pond. Okay, and then it filled with water. And then little tiny life forms started growing, and then they attracted bigger life forms, and they attracted bigger life forms, and then there was tadpoles and toads and little, little minnows. Now there's fish, and then the birds come to eat the fish. And now the foxes come to try to get a bird here and there. The deer come to drink from the water. And there's life in that pond. A black hole is in space. Like when you, if you would dig a hole in non-existing space. It was just, it's, it's space. But picture a space garden. We, 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 they, they call it a field. We live in a, a field, the magnetic field, the field of whatever, the, the barometric field, the, you know, why do you grow things in a field? Well, think about black hole being space is a field of dirt for us to plant something in. And in order to plant something, you have to dig a hole. Well, what's a hole in space is a black hole, which is basically digging some like a, a hole in space for a new beginning to be created. And that's also why things that seem to disappear or become non-existent go into a black hole because it also is like a recycler that would take things in that are con concepts that are being erased from one reality that could be used in another one. So they go into a black hole. So they're a possibility, but they were erased from one other reality. It's pretty amazing, but that's what a black hole is. A black hole is a plot in space dug up to start a new, let's say, existential garden. Like... A garden of, ex of existence. The Garden of Eden was started in a black hole. Let's say the earth itself started in a black hole. That speck of dust was in a black hole. A plot in space. The, the Garden of Space. And this is just all conceptually so I, can, so I can give an analogy. Like in space, like in the dirt of a field, when you dig up a plot so you can plant some seeds... That is in a, not a black hole, but a dirt hole. Well, a black hole in space is like a spot being readied to start a new growth of existence, a new galaxy, a new universe, a new, you know, what we call those words, those words. There's no such thing as a galaxy or a universe. Those are just words. Those are just things we think that we see in a human body through our mind. Our mind has made those things up. When we're without a human body, we don't even need those things. But then, since we don't have words to put whatever they would be, then how the hell would you express them? Well, that's the power of the word, explaining those things. Like, a black hole wouldn't be able to be really truly explained by someone who wasn't a scientist until they actually experienced what it is. It's a, it's a, okay, the space isn't empty. But let's say you take a space, you, you, you dig a hole in that not empty space. You dig a hole in space to start a new growth of life. That's what a black hole is. And you can compost old ideas or old realities or old things that were concepts that are being sort of recycled. Like compost, when you take some kind of peelings and you put them in the ground and they mush back into something. That's what a black hole does. You take something and you put it in, you put the old stuff in there and you dig a hole and you plant a new idea. And that's where ideas actually come from. Every time you make a new idea, it's sort of in a mental black hole. You're planting the seed in that hole that you dig in space. 
you dig a black hole and you plant a seed in it. So once you understand what a black hole is, you use it to your advantage. You make black holes every day because then you start using that word like it doesn't mean anything. Because it doesn't mean anything. It's just a word that science made up to boggle us. And they're boggled by their own explanations because they're just boggled. Because they're coming from their, I'm Professor Blah 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 from the Harvard Faculty of Science and Space. And I have discovered this new idea of black holes with satellites from Malchus Far and 300 light years from the galaxy of Blush Gabar. You know, it doesn't matter. Those things are words that science makes up that make them sound intelligent. A real, true, intelligent person knows that none of those things are there. Those things are only seen by human beings, not other animals and insects, because they can't conceptualize those things to that kind of degree. And we actually become more intelligent than that when we're not in the human body anymore. But nobody in the human body has ever been able to relay that message because they went through their life. And by the time they became enlightened, they still held on to all those personal qualities that made them them. Like Sadhguru, whatever made him who he is, the location he grew up from, India. Like he still has a little bit of India in him. So he still talks really highly of India. I don't talk lowly of India, but I don't talk highly of where I'm from because I'm from here and this is how I became enlightened because it has nothing to do with the location I'm in. If you understand that, you think nothing of the location you're in except for it's another place to be in. It's another place to stand. That's it. Like, it doesn't matter where you're from. Nobody around any area knows any more than anyone from any other area. We all have the potential to know the same thing because we are all the same thing. And I'm the only one trying to relay that message the right way. And because I say it, with so much confidence, or I say it, people think it's cocky. They don't believe it. Or even if I say it with open love and heart, the, the way I truly feel, because I truly feel that way right now, even when I'm being a little more animated in my explanation of it, because it gets, a, you know, it, it's it's funny to try to keep saying it to people when they just don't get it. So you got to say it to them in a way that makes a little more sense, and you keep trying to say it again. So you have to come back around in circles to explain the same things over and over again. You can't just say it and be like, well, what I just said explains it all. So just take that in and really like. Knock that around in your head until you get it because everything that I'm saying is true, but you're not getting it because everything you think it to be is true. Even if you don't get it and you're confused, that ends up being true too. And even if you're, you're totally boggled and you don't know what's going on, that becomes true for your reality as well. If you don't know what's going on, guess what your reality is? You have no idea what the fuck is going on. If you start getting it, reality is that. When you start getting a little more mature, reality is that. And when you think all these things around you make they're a big deal, you're never going to get it. So really open up your heart and mind and go inside because that's where it all really truly comes from. It's not just a saying. It's really what's happening. Everything you see outside of you comes from inside of you so deeply that until people really get that, they're not going to, they're not really going to get better as a people. They might make new gadgets and gadgets, but until they really understand what it means to go inside and understand that everything outside you comes from inside you, each individual person, like, that's what we need to teach and, like, really focus on that. And maybe we have to start at a younger age because adults don't have it in them to want to go back and do it. I'm not saying they don't, but it seems like most people don't want to do it. They have it in them, but they just don't want to. Because they've already done so much and had to go through so much to get there. We'll go through so much more to get farther. That's what I'm saying. I love you. Peace.